System integrators are a critical part of the hardware ecosystem, whether or not you've ever bought from one, because they comprise millions of dollars of sales and hardware every year. And a lot of our audience, myself included, do prefer to buy parts and build PCs based on those parts, but that's not to invalidate the relevance of system integrators like Origin PC, Main Gear, CyberPower, and iBuyPower, which is who we're looking at today. We're looking at iBuyPower's Revolt 2 gaming PC, interesting primarily because of its small form factor and custom designed case. The Revolt 2 uses a custom case that's actually designed by iBuyPower. This isn't some OEM case that'll show up on Newegg in six months. That is not the case here. It is available only through iBuyPower and they are the ones who actually engineered the Revolt 2, did their own thermals and are now manufacturing it for this specific product. That boosts the premium a bit, but it does make for a far more unique setup and one that's very interesting to test thermally, which we'll look at momentarily. Unfortunately, the enclosure and its RGB LED smart lighting are not available separately for DIY builders, which I really wish that some of these SIs would investigate that option, but obviously they're trying to create some sort of value add to actually buy from them. The thermal design challenges faced by the Revolt 2 are shared by the entire ITX industry where cases make constant trade-offs between discretion, silence, and cooling efficiency. We'll be talking about thermals, then gaming FPS benchmarks, and then some value propositions versus the DIY route. The Revolt 2 has two fan slots in its enclosure and they're both on the bottom. They're two 120 millimeter slots and those do both support radiators as well. So our test system uses a CLC for the CPU, that's a Corsair H55 in our build, and then a CLC for the GPU as well. It's running a 980 Ti hybrid. And that does make for an interesting cooling scenario. Now, because it is limited to two 120 millimeter bottom fans, you're basically forced to have those as intake fans, whether they're push or pull, it's definitely gonna be intake. And the only way to get heat out of the system is to exhaust it through the blower fan in this case. So the blower fan works different from a push fan, a push fan, pushes the air straight into the heat sink, and then that dissipates and generally just ends up back in the case, eventually gets forced out maybe through the CPU cooler. With a blower fan, the fan sucks in air from the front and the top of the car, the faceplate, and then forces it out the back. And that is very useful in this scenario where we have a lot of heat generated within the case because there's only bottom intake. Now, another place that the built-in fans are useful is the power supply. So in this instance, the Revolt 2, the power supply is facing the PCH and sort of near the memory facing the back of the video card. And this power supply fan for once is used to pull air out of the system. So it's pulling hot air from the system pushing it out the back of the power supply and exhausting it. So it does mean higher tolerances for the PSUs, but they're generally pretty beefy components to begin with. So they can handle a bit of extra heat and do a pretty good job at getting rid of what's sitting around the PCH area, which you definitely don't want to overheat. And one thing that I did like is iWare Power actually requires a liquid cooler for this build and their website does not allow air cooler purchases. So this is a good thing because even if you find a low profile cooler that fits, which I'm sure there is one, it would be suffocated for air within the cramped quarters of the Revolt 2, and GPUs are not limited to liquid only, but it does certainly help just for the same reason of trying to get that air out of the case as quickly as possible. The case mounts its SSDs in the front and center as a sort of showroom display, so they're left fairly unventilated, but SSDs run so cool anyway that thermals aren't really a concern. In fact, and we'll talk about this in a future video, SSDs actually struggle when they're operating too cool, and that's from an Intel conducted study. The hard drive, however, is mounted just behind the front panel, so it is within that cooling area, and Iowa Power has intentionally mounted the GPU cooler under the acrylic window. So the GPU's faceplate is present and visible, similar to what Corsair did with the inverted 600C mount that we reviewed recently. The Revolt 2 also inverts its motherboard by forcing right side access and positioning the PCIe slots toward the north of the enclosure, an intentional design choice to avoid using PCIe ribbon cables to extend the interface. So that means the GPU mounts straight into the board as normally. This all creates a very tight, compact enclosure that's got potential for cooling vortexes or entropy concerns is what we look at. And in our benchmark, we had a range of 12.14 Celsius between all the ITX enclosures. So that's our range for the chart. And that's definitely a large range for case thermals, but we observed recently with the Manta testing that ITX enclosures somewhat obviously do operate a bit warmer. The Revolt 2 runs at eight Celsius gained over the larger Manta. The Revolt 2 pushes 50.35 Celsius on its H55 CLC, which is a bit warm, but well within the acceptable temperatures for the CPU. You would definitely not want an air cooler on this thing. And because iBuyPower 
disallows air cooler configurations, that's really not a concern because it's just not possible to add one in unless you do it yourself. As for the GPU, we observed the hybrid at 35.2 Celsius loaded about 12 to 13 Celsius higher than open air benchmarking of the hybrid, which we did previously. And this is a testament to the hybrid's cooling solution more than anything really, which we do discuss in the Seahawk and hybrid reviews. And we even did a lid open and lid closed test, not shown here, which saw the overall temperatures increased by about one to maybe two Celsius on average. And the GPU and CPU, we decided to change the configuration. So Iowa Power ships at stock as a pull setup and we thought push would be better. So we fought with the case, changed it to push, and that decreased thermals by a further 1.5 Celsius. Now normally, this is where I would suggest that the manufacturer or system integrator ship their build with our tested configuration. But in this case, the tubes were somewhat pinched because of the nature of the power supply mount. So in that instance, we do agree that a pole configuration is the safest and for 1.5 Celsius, not a big deal. Let's move on to gaming benchmarks. As you know, with system integrators, gaming benchmarks are really not that special because these guys aren't making the 980 Ti, they're not making the 6700K, which are the both two components that are in here driving gaming performance, but it is still important to look at for an overview of how this thing performs. So that's what you're looking at right now. The hybrid and 6700K are able to carry more than 80 to 90 FPS in several games at 1440p and would be able to push modest frame rates at 4K, which you can see in one of our previous tests with the 980 Ti hybrid. The 1080p test puts us well above the 144Hz threshold for Black Ops, and we observed no noticeable playback or frame time flaws during 1080p and 1440p testing across all of our tested games. You can read more about these tests on the site, which has a link in the description below. We look at this stuff objectively, so I'll leave the videos and photos to your viewing for de deciding if you like how this looks. But speaking to design, not just aesthetics, there are a lot of things that Iowa Power does very well. There's also a fair few things that they could improve upon. The smallest and most petty complaint pertains to the enclosure's buried thumb screws in the back side of the panels. The side panel thumb screws are utterly useless, seen as they're inaccessible unless using a screwdriver. And this is because the screws are submerged within the panel extrusion. The acrylic window is well done and uses a quality, fairly scratch resistant material, which again is a rarity in cases. I like the presentation of SSD and GPU components. Now here's a point of interest. You'll see some of these shots show our sticker on the side panel. Iowa Power is exploring the option of more user logo customization, which they've done in the past, and they want to do that for future system builds, but they're not currently offering the service at this time for the Revolt 2. There are three primary SKUs of the Revolt 2. Buyers can customize the spec to order, and our build is running a non-standard spec shipped with a GTX 980 Ti hybrid. The GPU upgrade from reference, along with a few other changes, bumps our loaner unit's price up pretty substantially to $3,101. The Revolt 2 Extreme, which is the highest official SKU without modification, ships for $1,900, runs a 6700K and unspecified 980 Ti, along with 16 gigabytes of 2800 megahertz memory. The next SKU down is the Revolt 2 Pro at $1,400, which switches to a GTX 970, dropping another tier from that. The Revolt 2 Plain Build is $900 for a GTX 950 and i5 6500. The value proposition part for part at the high end is actually not bad. If you were to build and buy with the exact same parts found for the Revolt 2 high-end systems, the cost is only about $134 more than doing it yourself. And that comes with Windows and with a custom case. So the overhead is really not that bad, but as you all know, the price could change drastically by dropping to a lower spec PSU, changing your other specs within the system to use cheaper parts, but that's not really how it works with system integrators because this is some behind the scenes knowledge for you all. These SIs often get MDFs or marketing development funds and they get heavy discounts from certain partners when they're trying to move inventory. So that's why their prices can sometimes directly match or on rare occasion, maybe undercut what is possible through DIY but it's also why there's a limited component selection. All in all, the Revolt 2 is a pretty interesting box, just externally, it looks interesting. It's got the acrylic window that's a bit different with the top facing GPU faceplate, and that's something that we're seeing as a trend now with the 600C for DIY routes, and I hope it does continue because it's an interesting design that's a bit different from what you're used to because the motherboard's inverted to do that. So aesthetically, design-wise, mechanically, it's all very interesting in terms of the performance. The FPS performance was as expected. It's running a 6700K in this instance and 90 Ti hybrid. So very strong FPS performance with no problems at all on 1440p. Could even run 4K if you tweaked your settings a bit. And you'll see that on our site and older articles as well. So 
that's fine. Thermals are not bad, but they really could use some improvement. And I don't know that I have a good way to do that without ruining the look of the case. So overall, because they're forcing CLCs or liquid coolers for the CPU cooler and recommending one in some cases for the GPU cooler, that does help manage the thermals and mitigate the impact of sitting basically in a tiny box that's just heating up and generating heat that's having trouble to escape. So the liquid coolers help with that quite tremendously, but they're still in the 50 Celsius delta range, which is pretty warm for a liquid cooler to operate delta T over ambient. Iowa Power loses some of its good value at the top end as you shift toward the lower end SKU. So the GTX 950 and i5 combination is somewhat of a curious choice at $900 as it is possible to build an i5 and 960 system for around $800 or so. I just did it the other day actually. Iowa Power's weakest point is in its low SKU and the value increases tremendously as the total price increases. So we would advise against buying that low end SKU unit at $900. The last item here pertains to the communication of Iowa Power's team. So we saw that this unit was actually being shipped with, you'll have to follow me closely here, the power supply selection for a 970 and an i7 was, quote, uh, 350 watts, and then it said free upgrade to 700 or 800 watts, something like that, something fully reasonable and actually a bit more than needed. But the 350 watt mark, although they are not shipping that power supply with the unit, they're listing it there to show as anyone selling a product would do, listening it there to show, hey, this is what we normally give you, whether they do or not. Here's what you will get as a value add or perceived value add to the user. I don't have a problem with that. That's pretty normal. The thing I pointed out to Iowa Power before filming this review was, you know, hey, 350 watts is really not something I feel comfortable with for the particular configuration we're talking about. We did all the tests. It consumes 290 watts at load. That is definitely pushing it. You're at 83, 84% power consumption on the PSU. Depending on the quality of the PSU, it might not be enough. So why is that there? I, I know you're shipping with a 7 or 800 watt power supply, but maybe just remove that completely because it looks bad. It does, it's not enough power, and anyone who knows that will spot it immediately, and it will reflect poorly. So I had looked at this and they pretty immediately went and updated the website and changed the minimum spec to something more reasonable. I, I think it was 400 or 450 watts, which is completely acceptable for the build we were specifically looking at at the time. And then upgrade stayed the same, the 700 or 800 watts, whatever it was. So the reason I point that out is because the wattage was a concern. Again, whether or not they ship with it, I didn't like the wattage. I did not at all agree that that was enough wattage to drive a system reliably for a number of years. And so I pointed it out and they corrected it and were pretty level-headed about taking the criticism. And that is something for which I think some credit is deserved. Now that doesn't change what you all think of the system. So whatever you think of this externally that is your choice gaming performance is fine value proposition is okay at the high end it loses a lot of value at the low end and then overall the thermals are acceptable okay but not amazing and certainly not competing with most itx cases on the market but it's a unique case a shoebox toaster thing so that's what you get for that in interest of full disclosure iowa power was one of our sponsors at ces and that does not impact the content in any way whatsoever. Our testing was 100% independent. I wrote that in the contract, the testing and the results, the analysis, all of this review content entirely independent and controlled by us. But I did want to lay it out there that full disclosure, they were a sponsor because there's not a lot of transparency in the media industry these days. So there's that. If you like this type of content, as always, hit the Patreon link in the description below or the post roll video and link in the description below for the article. I'll see you all next time.